If I look back, never go forth Stuck on a treadmill, never left north Well I went west, first flew south like birds Sealed seas in degrees round earth Left a small mind in a small town Bricks of abuse wanna knock it all down Like leaves from the trees, I'm around In the breeze like bees, a belief never found Welcome back to Sensuality. Today I have taken 27 oils and I have made a few perfumes. I've selected three and I'm going to share them with you today. Um, I did mean to take 30 oils but I just miscounted and ended up with 27. Now before I share the formulas I just want to say that I think this is a really good practice because I think that when you set limitations for yourself it actually forces you to be more creative. Yes, uh, you know, if you have lots of oils you can definitely be really creative um, and you might not think that you can be as creative with just a few oils and perhaps your perfume won't be as interesting but it will you know definitely make you a better perfumer it will definitely enhance your skills uh, and and you will have to rely on the awareness that you've already built up a lot more uh, because you have to you know make something interesting with 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 fewer oils so i do recommend this this method just to you know practice your skills um and that's basically what the inspiration was for me to to actually um you know do this myself uh, and i just thought i would make a video out of it um and i had a lot of fun doing it and i think i'll do this more often because uh, you know i think i've got around 300 oils and you know if i break them down into 30 oils i can make a few videos uh, you know just test my own skills um, and just see if i can come up with some interesting things and i actually surprised myself because normally when i sit down to make a perfume i have lots of options and possibly you know this can this can have a negative effect on your perfume because you you kind of um you have to pick one way to go yeah so you know there are many options and you pick one but there are many more and um, perhaps your reasons for um, going down a certain route is is you know no better than you just had to take one route and you went down there um, I think when you have fewer options you 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 uh, concentrate your intent a lot more and uh, you probably get more out of the perfume so yeah i really recommend this method so i'll start just by sharing the 27 materials that i used and then i'll get straight into the perfume formulas so i took iso e super hedione galaxolide methyl ionone so you're talking about the grossman accord and when i made the first perfume this was basically just my starting point um, because i didn't put a lot of thought into these oils i started with that accord i you know put together a ratio that i was happy with and then i just thought you know what else would smell good uh, in this combination and this basically was my train of thought for the entire first perfume um, and the, the first perfume was a success and I you know I, I chose that as one of the perfumes that I wanted to keep um, uh, and then uh, you know I went to a, a jasmine base I chose Fixitel, Meal, Wood base, Mysore, Iso Eugenol, Castorium, Guayac wood, Hexyl Salicylate, Cologne, Cassie. Uh, it was a Cassie base. I chose a leather base from Perfumers World. Uh, has a fantastic smell. Um, Isobutyl quinoline, cardamom, ethyl vanillin, diacetyl, linalool, ethyl saffronate, undercavitol, geraniol, patchouli, bergamot, mint. Um, this is a combination of bergamot and mint. Coumarin and a molecule called apple red. I say a molecule. I think it's possibly an accord. I also purchased this from the perfumers world. Um, and they were the oils that I stuck to. I made about five or six perfumes and I selected uh, the, the three most interesting. So let's get to the formulas. As I was saying, I started with the Grossman Accord. I added 12 drops of Hedione, nine drops of Iso E Super. I added one drop of Methyl Ionone, two drops of Galaxolide. Um, I then went on to add four drops of Ethyl Vanillin, two drops of a leather base. Uh, this was a leather fluorescence from the Perfumers World. I added four drops of Guayac Wood, four drops of uh, a Jasmine Sandback fluorescence that uh, again was from Perfumers World. I added three drops of male, 
two drops of Fixital, one drop of Acasi Fluorescence. Uh, yes, it was from the Perfumers World. Uh, I added three drops of Hexyl Salicylid, one drop of Apple Red. This is also from the Perfumers World. Uh, I think this is uh, an, an Accord um, uh, or, or a base. Um, I added uh, one drop of Diacetyl, which is a really fantastic buttery uh, popcorn uh, molecule. I added... Um, one drop of ethyl saffronate, three drops of linalool, one drop of isobutyl quinoline, one drop of castorium, and one drop of undecavitol. So perfume one is very feminine and it highlights the Grossman Accord. It has other components, but the smell essentially is methyl ionone, galaxolide, isoesuva, and hedione. Uh, I added, well, I'll just begin by explaining my ratios. I, you know, you can make the Grossman Accord any way you like, and it will be to your taste. If you like a lot of methyl ionone, you're probably gonna go heavier there. Um, I wanted a lot more transparency in my perfume, so I went with a higher ratio of hedione. Uh, obviously, hedione, isoe, super great blender, so, some of, of, of the amounts of Hedione and ISO A Super are, are there for blending. Um, I added less originally with the methyl ionone um, and the galaxolide. And you know, at the end of the perfume, it smelled great, but it was, I just wanted it to be more transparent basically. So that's why I added a little bit more ISO A Super and I added uh, more Hedione. Now it's purely down to personal taste. If you like a, a more heavier set perfume than um, you know, where I was originally without adding a, a lot more Hedione um, was perfectly fine. It, it, it really smelled good, but I was trying to go for something more modern. Um, uh, uh, so I wanted a lot more transparency and I really love that perfume. Uh, you know, I surprised myself actually. I've, I've made sort of similar perfumes before with a similar type of smell. Um, and yeah, I've liked them, but this was just, I don't know, it, it, it was the same sort of perfume, but it just uh, brought something new, um, which, which I was very surprised, uh, very surprised with. Um, uh, and um, uh, yeah, I actually, you know, didn't really put any thought into making it at all. I actually worked out the ratios on uh, my phone, uh, which is also something else that you can do when you build up your awareness. You can just uh, write down a formula on paper, make it up and, you know, eight times out of 10, uh, it's, a, it's a success when I do that. Um, but yeah, I didn't put a lot of thought into it. I just wanted to really um, highlight, uh, you know, the benefits of learning your materials. And I, I'm specifically talking about the materials that you own. Uh, you know, if you, it doesn't matter. If you don't have the materials, just there's no point in learning anything about them. Just study the materials that you have. Uh, I know that money is always a factor and, you know, you you spend some money on some oils you might not have many but it doesn't matter just learn everything you can about blending them together and then you add a few more oils uh, and then a few more and a few more and as time goes by you know you build up your collection so yeah uh i, I thought this really highlighted my point well um i uh it you know it, it's very it has a very cohesive smell um it's very linear and that's the kind of perfume that i like so perfume number two so perfume number two uh its main note is cardamom um and it's a very uh sexy uh, uh, uh combination between uh, linalool and cardamom um i like its level of transparency i think it's very very sexy uh, and i think out of the three it's definitely my favorite i think it probably leans more towards masculine but i guess it could also be unisex um, i'm not always the best at determining uh, if when something is feminine when something is uh, is masculine i obviously know when i make something that's overtly masculine or overtly uh, feminine but my wife says that i tend to make things that have a like, you know a balance between the masculine and the feminine so yeah i'm not the best at judging my perfumes but yeah i would say you could definitely wear this if you were a man and i suspect you could wear this quite easily uh, if you are a woman also um so yeah let's discuss what went into that perfume so the second perfume actually has a lot less uh, uh, oils uh, uh, and it's a lot more simple. Um, I basically went with four drops of the Lever Fluorescence. I added 10 drops of Iso A Super, 10 drops of Hedione, four drops of Coumarin, two drops of Geraniol, 
two drops of bergamot mint. Uh, I added one drop of cardamom, uh, one drop of patchouli, and one drop of undercavatol. Um, and yeah, a, a, a really fantastic um, perfume. As I said, I love the combination of cardamom and the molecule linalool. Um, you know, so it definitely has to be the molecule linalool, not not an, an essential oil that has linalool in it. Uh, or you know, if it could be the molecule linalool, or you could just use rosewood because it's the same smell, um, and they're both top notes. Um, absolutely phenomenal i think it's the sexiest combination um and uh yeah uh this great leather fluorescence um from perfumers world it's fantastic if you like castorium you'll you'll really enjoy this um and uh yeah uh you know i, I sort of like coumarin geranial the bergamot mint um i was thinking a little bit along the lines of a fougere um but i didn't select lavender or any of the other associated oils. So it doesn't exactly smell like a fougere, but yeah, that cardamom uh, combination with the linalool is just amazing. Uh, it, it's just really fantastic. Um, so yeah, I was really, really pleased with that perfume. Now moving on to perfume number three, formula number three. So perfume number three, again, we have that Grossman Accord, but it's, it's understated. Um, you know, it has this great opening of methyl iron and castorium and together they kind of create this um, sperm note, uh, but it's, it's sexy and it's intriguing and it's subtle. It just hints at it. And because of that, it's, it's just incredibly sexy. And it's really what you get as soon as the, the perfume opens up and then it just sort of fades into the Grossman Accord, but a very transparent, very soft, very subtle, um, example of the Grossman Accord. Um, uh, it's just, it's a very provocative, perfume and it's incredibly interesting which is another reason why i chose this one um i i made as i said i made a few other perfumes and there was nothing wrong with the blending of the oils it just you know they didn't smell interesting enough um or i personally just didn't like them you know which is always the thing with uh, perfumery you might make something that somebody else would love but if you don't love it it's very hard to um, become attached to it or you know you just you don't really have any reverence for it uh, uh, you know there's a lot of perfumes that I throw away just because they're not to my tastes or because they're not to my tastes I can't really appreciate them and acknowledge that they are a good perfume it's just the way it is um, but yeah I really love this perfume as well so you know just to go over what I've said in a nutshell limiting yourself uh, choosing just a few oils to work with really uh, you know forces you to rely on the, the awareness that you've already built up um, and you can you know make some perfumes you wouldn't normally make you know if I think oh I've got 300 oils you know where do I begin and uh, sometimes what happens is you get too far away from the theme of your perfume or you get a little bit too obscure or you lose your way um you know you you, you sort of go off on tangents and uh you know sometimes you go too far you can't go back uh, so i really find that if you limit your oils you kind of forces you to to choose um the best oils to um, achieve what you want to achieve from your perfume and you know even in the beginning if you can't really do that if you have just a few oils but they're not the best oils to go together um, just finding out how to make the best version of a bad perfume is a really good uh, thing to discover it's a really good thing to do you know it, it, um, when I first started I only had 15 oils and together well I, you know I could really make one perfume um, and I made, I tried making a few, few other perfumes, but they pretty much, you know, smelled the same. Uh, and yeah, but what I, what I did was, is I learned how to make the best bad perfume, um, how to blend it uh, to a way where I was satisfied, uh, not just because I think, and for me, this is when I realized that perfume, uh, yes, it's about the smell, but you know, if it's an underwhelming smell, you don't, you're not really going to appreciate the perfume. You're not going to want to wear it, etc. You probably never make it again. Um, but you know, when you when you are just trying to find the best way to make a bad perfume, you kind of discover 
how to to get the best out of what you have, how to make it go uh, further, and um, yeah, I, I I just think that's just a you know for me personally it was just a a thing that I that I learned very unconsciously, uh, uh, very subconsciously. It's um, it's actually coming out now when I'm talking, um, as my phone's going off. Um, but yeah, I mean, I would just implore you to try this, you know, um, just try it for yourself. I think it's a, a really good exercise. So that's basically all that I wanted to talk about today. I'll be back shortly with another video. So stay tuned.